let's move on. Now let's go back to applications. I'm gonna go back to uh, Wasser trying GAN and try to improve it. But for now, let's see an application, another application of GANs. Let's say you have an image, this is low resolution, and then you want to make it high resolution. Again, what is the problem setup? This is gonna be a one to many example. You have one example, but then there could be many good high resolution versions of this. This is an uh, ill post problem. There is not a unique answer to this problem. Okay, once an image is down sampled, it is down sampled forever. The information is gone. But you want to make it, uh, you might, you want to have a mapping from a low dimensional image to a high dimensional image. And then you want it to make, to look realistic. For instance, uh, if you use bicubic interpolation, that's going to give you an image. It is going to be very blurry. If you use neural networks without any GANs, it's going to give you some better performance, but it's still it's not perfect. But then you have this neural network here, uh, super resolution GAN, and you can see that it is actually imagining some parts. It is, for instance, here, it's imagining some details. It's not the exact details in your original image, but it doesn't look bad, okay? It's gonna give you those fine details. So what is the math behind this? You're gonna have a high resolution, super resolved image. This is coming out of your neural network. So ISR is the output of your neural network, is the output of your generator. ILR is the low resolution input image. And IHR is the ground truth. So you have a high resolution counterpart of ILR. So these are your data. This is the output of your network. The cool thing about uh, super resolution is that you can generate as many data as you want. How? You take a high resolution image. This is your original image. You put a Gaussian, you push it through a Gaussian filter. It's gonna make things blurry. And then you downsample. Rather than saving all of the pixels, you're gonna subsample your pixels. And you're gonna downsample by a factor of R, by a factor of two, three, four, et cetera. And that's gonna give you a lot of data, okay? As soon as you know your high resolution image, you can generate the low resolution image on the fly. So you can have a lot of data. Let's say C is the number of color, color channels. Let's say you have three channels, red, green, blue for your images. Then the low resolution image is gonna have uh, W times H pixels. And each one is gonna have three channels, red, green, blue. So that's your low resolution. What's going to happen to the high resolution and the super resolved images? They are going to have a higher resolution. It's going to be two times bigger or three times bigger or four times bigger. You're going to have more pixels. You're going to put a generator. This is going to be conditional. You're conditioning on the low resolved image, and then you are outputting a high resolution image. That's your generator. How do you train it? The neural network structure is going to be a bunch of residual connections. Okay. That one uh, we cover in part one of the course, and that's where we saw this result. Uh, but we don't worry about the neural network structure here. So you just have a neural network, a bunch of con convolutional neural networks with some shortcuts. That's gonna give you your high resolution. That's the underlying ground truth. This is the output of your generator. Now you want to learn these parameters. The question is, what is your loss function? What loss function are you gonna use? And this is where we are going to get creative. Our loss function could come out of a discriminator. If you are using the original GAN, if you are using Wasser Strang GAN, this could be a critic. So whatever that you do, you're going to end up with a loss function. As soon as you learn your discriminator, you're going to know your loss function because then you're going to use that discriminator and try to fool it. Okay, and it is discriminating between high resolved images, the original images and the generated images coming out of this generator. So for this objective, theta g is uh, known and you are maximizing with respect to theta d. And that's gonna give you a loss function. Okay, perfect. Now we are gonna play around with this loss, loss of super resolution. And you're gonna have a lot of flexibility here. X is an unknown and I'm gonna tell you what that is. This part is the generated uh, adversarial loss coming out of your discriminator. And then you can add the two with some hyperparameter. Okay, so what is this? What is this content loss? And don't worry about this perceptual loss. I'm gonna tell you what that is. For this guy, 
you can use a mean squared error loss. What's going to happen is that you're going to look at the pixels of the high resolved image and the pixels of the generated image. You're going to subtract them from each other, square them, do a summation on all of those uh, pixels, and then find the average, divide by the total number of pixels. That's a mean squared error loss. And MSE is an example of this X here. Equivalently, rather than looking at the pixels of the original image, you can look at the pixels of some hidden layer or some hidden unit inside your neural network. So let's say you're going to pick some pre-trained neural network, and that's going to be VGG. It's a pre-trained neural network. You can just load it, fix the parameters, and that VGG network is really good at classifying, and it is trained on ImageNet. Now you can go ahead, push your image through this neural network, and stop at some layer. And at that layer, you're going to look at the pixels, and you're going to have a mean squared error on that layer. Why are we doing this? Because we want our images to look perceptually similar. You don't want it to be similar at the pixel level. You want your images to have similar meanings. And this is a way of incorporating those meanings. Now, I'm sure you're asking what is INJ. Phi INJ is uh, actually your network, and you're cutting your network at the jth convolution. This is after the activation. So this is after ReLU and before doing any max pooling. So you're going to, this is the output of your network. After the jth convolution, this is going to give you j, and before the ith max pooling. So you're going to stop there, and then you're going to compare the features. And this is supposedly going to give you the meaning of an image. You don't care about the single, every single pixel in your image. You care about that uh, this image corresponds to a person, for instance. It has a meaning. So that's another realization of X. X could be MSE, X could be VGG. And uh, for the super resolution, the generator, we are going to use this objective. Here, your D is fixed, and you're learning your generator. And this is the original GANs objective. OK, perfect. In terms of your neural network structure, I don't want to go into details of the neural network structure here. But uh, you are going to take a low resolution image, and then you are going to do a bunch of convolutions. This is a convolution with a kernel size of 9. And then you are going to have 64 filters. These are the output filters. And then you are going to have a stride of 1. This is the first convolution. P ReLU is parametric ReLU. It's very similar to leaky ReLU, where the leak parameter is free. You can learn it from one iteration to the next iteration, it's going to get optimized. Then you're going to have a bunch of residual connections and residual blocks, convolution, batch norm, p ReLU, convolution, batch norm. And then here is where your residual connection is going to come in. This is the kernel size. This is the number of output channels, a stride of one. And then you keep repeating the same pattern, one times, two times, three times, and four times. You put a bunch of other convolutions and batch norm. You're going to put a residual connection because it is easier to learn the difference between a low resolved image and a high resolved image rather than learning the entire function. Because this, the low resolved image is very similar to the original image, and you are just learning the modifications. And that's the intuition behind these shortcuts. You do a bunch of other convolutions, and then in the end, you get your super resolved image. Your discriminator is going to take as input. Uh, images, they are either fake or real, and it's going to output the probability of it being fake or real. Okay, We defined our data set. So that's our data set. How, that's how you're going to get your data. We defined our set of priors or prior assumptions. These are our neural networks. This is our model. This is our last function, which is going to help you optimize these two neural networks, the discriminator and the generator. And now how are you going to evaluate them? You're going to evaluate them. Uh, there are no good metrics for high resolution images or this problem, super resolution. These are some metrics that you can learn about them. These are, you can just Google them and take a look at the Wikipedia page. Their definitions are very simple. For instance, the signal to noise ratio is very correlated to the MSE loss that you have up there. It's basically the same formula. You're changing the 
furniture, rearranging the furniture a little bit. Mean opinion score is coming uh, out of showing these generated images to human evaluators. Maybe you're going to use Amazon Torque, and then they are going to say, okay, this image looks more realistic. It looks better. And then you count the number of people who gave you a better score. And that's how you're going to compare two methods, maybe SR ResNet versus SR GAN. And there is another metric, SSIM, that you can learn about on your own. Okay, any questions about this? This is really smart using, we learned that you can use a pre-trained neural network to come up with a metric for measuring the quality of generated images. And that was giving you the inception score. Now you're using a pre-trained network, in this case, VGG, to give you a loss function. These are smart observations, okay? Now that you did a lot of work and you pre-trained a neural network, can you use it somehow? And this is one of the ways that you can use that. It's gonna give you a new loss function. So it's very similar to the loss function that is coming here out of your discriminator. This is, again, another neural network. It is not pre-trained, but then you're training it on the fly to give you your loss function. 